פרווסר דף נ"ט עמוד א', perpetuating values, חוט המשולש. So the nephew of one of the hostages who was buried two days ago said that the strategic assets of Israel are its values. But how do you perpetuate values? How do you make sure that values, the country was founded on 75 years ago, that they're still alive in the youth of today? That the values of our grandparents, on which our grandparents and great parents were raised, is still alive and well in our children and grandchildren. How do you perpetuate values? And in all the, the books on parenting, the most important strategy is left out. There are lots of things one can do for parenting, sometimes successful, sometimes not so successful. But the one thing to do is left out. I asked Ramea Soloveitchik once to give me some advice. What should I be doing for raising children? So with a mischievous glint in his eye, he said, come with me. And he took me outside of his apartment to the neighbor's apartment. The door was closed. He said, put your ear against the door. <laughs> so I put my ear against the door and I hear the most terrible arguing and fighting between a husband and wife, swearing and cursing each other. It's terrible. I said to him, firstly, how did you know that that's what I would hear? When I, how did you know that they were going to be doing that? When I, he said, they're doing it all the time. I said, and, and the point is? He says, the point is they have a son in Ponovish and a son in Brisk. And I have other neighbors who are tzaddikim and their children are off the derech. It's not in your hands. And I said, so what do I have to do? So he told me. And what he told me in one word, we're going to learn in a little more than one word, and we'll understand the nuances of that really important strategy. We use two psukim, a posuk in Kohelet, of the famous statement of hachut hamishulash lo bimheirayinatek, a triple-threaded string doesn't snap easily. And the posuk in Yeshayahu that we say every day, I will tell you this, this is my covenant with you. The words that I've put in your mouths, lo yamushu, will not Deceit, will, will not desist mipicha from your mouth or mipizaracha in your children's mouth or mipizera zaracha amar Hashem meata v'adolam. Here's my guarantee, says Hashem. The Torah I've taught you will persist, the values I've given you will persist all the way through to your children and your children's children and, and all, all the way through. That's a guarantee. But we know that that's not right, so to say. We, we know that there isn't such a guarantee. Says our Gemara, Omar Rav Yudom Ashwal, there's an interesting Machlokas. The Machlokas itself is interesting, and I had to decide are we going to talk about the Machlokas or, or the, the side piece, which is really actually so foundational. We're going to talk about the side piece. But the Machlokas is a situation where a drain pipe runs into my neighbor's property. So from my roof, the rainwater runs into the gutter, and from the gutter into a drain pipe into my neighbor's property. And I want to remove that drain pipe for whatever reason. My neighbor can my neighbor can say, I need that water. I rely on the water that I get from your drain pipe. You can't remove it without my permission. You acquired the right to use my property to drain your roof in return for the value of the water I get from your roof's draining. It was actually a deal. The two way deal. You can't just pull out of it. I get the water, you get the drainage. You don't want the water on your roof, so you give it to me. I want the water in my, on my, in my yard, and I take it from you. So there was a big discussion about this. Rabbi Yoshaya said, Ma'akev, he is entitled to stop the, the roof owner. Rabbi Chama says, Ain't no Ma'akev. Rabbi Chama says, no, he doesn't have any rights on the roof owner. Azul Shaila to Rabbi Bisa, they went and asked Rabbi Bisa, third authority, Omalu Ma'akev, he said, no, he, d- he has the right. The neighbor can say, I need your water. I gave you rights to my property to drain your roof in return for your water. You can't unilaterally shut the, shut the water down. Here's the part we're going to learn. Kari Ale Rami Bar Chama. Rami Bar Chama said about these three authorities, Rabbi Yoshaya, Rabbi Chama, and Rabbi Bisa, Chut HaMushulash Lo Bimhera Yenatek. A triple-threaded string doesn't snap easily because they're Rabbi Yoshaya, Benosha Rabbi Chama, Benosha Rabbi Bisa. Because these three are all related. Rabbi Yoshaya is the son of Rabbi Chama, and Rabbi Chama is the son of Rabbi Bisa. So they asked Rabbi Yoshaya, who was a Odom Godomoid, an extremely great person, as Tosfa says. He said, Ma'akev, Rabbi Chama, his father, said, I know, you're wrong, I disagree with you. So they went to the, to the Zayda. And on Rabbi Yoshaya, the grandson, says Rashbam, Zay Rabbi Yoshaya, She'amar kizkeno. In that, the Rashbam is answering Tosfa's question. 
Because Tosfus asks, why are we making a big deal about these three people are a triple-threaded string that doesn't snap easily? He says, Tosfus, there are lots of cases of grandfather, grandson, of grandfather, son, and grandson who are all Tamidir Chachamim. This isn't the only example. Why are we making a thing here? Tosfus says, because they lived at the same time. But the Rashbam goes further than that and says, Zeh Rabbi Yoshai She'amar Kizkeno. We're talking about the way they learned this through. It's not just that they existed, that there were three generations of Tamid Chochem. And it's not just that they existed at the same time. It's that they learned together. The father and the son disagree with each other, so they go to the Zayda and they can ask the Zayda, isn't that amazing? You've got a disagreement, you've got a third party to go to. And what, what's this got to do with, with our Gemara? Because what are we learning about? We're learning about Chazoka. How long is a Chazoka? Three years. What are we talking about here? Three generations. Why three? We learned some time ago, the Yesoy that I told you from my, uh, from my Rebbe, Rebbe Yamishkovsky, that when a chazoka means that if something happens three times, there's a common reason for all three. If it happens twice, it's a coincidence. But if it happens three times, there's a common reason that's causing the repetition of the same, of the same situation. That's what a chazoka means. And so here you've got two Tamidah Chachamim, you've got Rabbi Yoshaya and his father, Rabbi Chama, and they're disagreeing, but there's a, it's a three-generational family. They can go and find out from the, what, what the Yesoid is, what the foundation is. They all learn, ter- learn Torah from the same source. Who's the source? The source is Rabbi Bisa. The source is the Zayda. Go back to the source. If you want to know, go back to the source. That's the Chut HaMeshulash. What a privileged situation that, that Rabbi Yoshai and Rabbi Chama are having an argument and, you can, and, and the Zayda is still alive. You can go back to the Zayda and you can ask the Zayda how to learn it. And the Zayda says the grandson is right. And Rabbi Yabat Chama said, isn't this amazing? The, the flow of learning and of conversation through three generations. Look how different these families are to the way families work today. Where families are spread all over the world and they've got really little to do with each other. Yeah, you're talking about the three generations that learn together, that work things out, that disagree with one another, resolve the disagreement by going back to the source. That's Chut HaMeshulash Bimhera Lo Yenatek. But we want to look at something further in a parallel sugya. The Rashbam says, and Rashi brings it on the Posuk in Kohelet, the Rashbam says, as we also learn in Bov Metziah Dav Pehe, so the Rashbam is alerting to us to the fact that there's a parallel sugya. Mipi Zaracha, Mipi Zera Zaracha, as we just learned, Lo Yamushu Mipi the Gemara says in Bova Metziah, from the third generation onwards, Torah always comes home. What is that piece of Gemara? And let's, let's understand the parallel. Because the, the Ben Yoyada, the Ben Ishchai, asks a very powerful question. And he says, Makshim amailo kari posuk lo yomushu mipicha. Why don't we use the same posuk as in Bova Metziah? Why did Rami Bar Chama not say, isn't this amazing, these three generations are fulfilling the promise of Mipicha, Bibizaracha, Bibizera Zaracha, that the Torah will not desist. Why doesn't it use the same posuk that we use in Bova Metziah? Ask the Ben Yehoyada. Let's have a look on the next page as to what that parallel sugi is. Seeing the Gemara inside is key and very important. Anybody who's son and grandson or Tamidi Chachomim, Shuv Ein Torah Poseket Mizarol Olam, that's it. Once there are three generations, it keeps going. Doesn't bring the Posuk of Chuta Mishulash Lobi Merai and Atek. It doesn't bring the Posuk from Kohelet, it brings the Posuk from Yeshayahu. My Omar Hashem, Omar Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Ani Arev Lecha Bedavazeh. Says the Rebbeinu Shlom, I am your guarantor. In this situation, I am your guarantor. My Meyatav Yadaram. What does it mean forever? Omar Rabbi Yehi, Ami Kan Ve'Elach Torah Mechazeret Alach Sanya Shela. From here on, Torah will always come back to its home. We'll understand that in in a bit. Then the Gemara goes on, and the continuation is the important part. Rav Yosef Yativ Arbaim Ta'anita. Yav Yosef fasted for 40 days and he said these fasts are for loya mushumipicha that I should not lose my terror, that it should remain clear in my, in my mind. Yati varbaim tanita achrina, he fasted another 40 days. Vakriyu loya mushumipicha mi bizaracha, he said, this one is for my gr- children, that they should stay tamidechachome. Yati v meyatanita achrina, atavakrina liya mushumipicha mi zazacha mi zazaracha. 
when they did it a third time, another 40 days, 120 days altogether, then he said, that's for my grandchildren. And then he said, from now on, having done my 120 days of fasting, I don't have to fast anymore because Torah Hashem guarantees the Torah will come back. I've done what I can do to make sure the Torah lasts three generations in my family. Once I've done what I can do, the Rebbeinu Shalom steps in as a guarantor. Once again, we see, as I said in a, in a recent video on the war, miracles are not substitutes for effort. Miracles are partnerships. When you've done everything you can do, Hashem extends your capacity further. But miracles only start where you end. Where your efforts end, then a nace can happen, not until then it can't happen. Says Rav Yosef, I've done my bit. What do you mean you've done your bit? You sent them to Yeshiva, isn't that enough? Oh, <laughs> says Rav Yosef. Lots of people send their children to Yeshiva and nothing happens with them. Or they get messed up in Yeshiva. Even worse. It's not enough. I fasted 120 days and davened for my children. That's called having done my bit. And explains the Ben Ishchai further from Ben Ishchai in Metzi on the parallel posuk. He asks, why doesn't it say, the order is wrong, it should say, Koshu Tamid Chacham, any person who is a Tamid Chacham, and his father is a Tamid Chacham, and his grandfather is a Tamid Chacham, in Torah Posekit Mizaro. Why does it say, he's a Tamid Chacham, his son and his grandson? It's coming to tell you that this isn't just a generational fact. If you've got three generations, you've got God's guarantee. No, you've got to do what Rav Yosef did. To make this work, you've still got to do your bit. Don't leave it to chance. To send your children to Jewish day schools and to yeshivas, that's leaving it to chance. Because there's only a certain percentage, I don't know what the percentage is today, but it's pretty low. There's only a percentage chance that that will be successful. That's one thing. You've got to do the things that are the basic things you've got to do, but that's no guarantee. The guarantee comes from the tefillah. That's what Ramea Soloveitchik said to me, that it's... The, if you just leave it as random, these people next door have children in Ponovision in Brisk, and my other neighbors who are, are tzaddikim have children who have gone off the derrick. So, so you, you can't control it, other than through tefillah. All you can do as a father, your job as a parent is to be mispalel, to open the pathways of bracha from Hashem to your children, from Hashem to your grandchildren. That's your most important role as a parent is to daven for your children and grandchildren because uh, the Rebbe Hashem listens to the tefillah of a parent and a grandparent for, for their children. That's your role. Yes, Jewish education, all of that, you can do that and that's important to do, but don't leave out the most important thing of all because there's no guarantee without that. They say that somebody asked the Steipler once, what's a, a segula for having successful children? What am I supposed to do? And the Steipler said, my son Chaimke, that was Rebbe Chaim Kanievsky, my son Chaimke, he said, he's 60 years old. And I don't start davening that he should be a Talmud Chochem. And I, I think Reb Chaim Kanievsky told the story himself. 60 years old and I'm still davening and davening and davening that my child should be a Talmud Chochem. Because I realize without my tefillah there's no guarantee. It doesn't necessarily happen. The tefillah is what connects oneself to God, to Hashem. And when you daven for somebody else, you're creating a connection for the somebody else. And if you're davening for your own children, it's a massive connection that you're creating. And it's on and on, as you see with Rav Yosef, 40 days of fasting, another 40 days, another 40 days of tefillah, of davening for, for the children. And that's why it says the Ben Yehuda that it mentioned that way. So we go back again now to the, to the Ben Ishchai on Ksubis. He says, venerally, the continuation, answering his question of why does our Gemara not bring the Posuk from Bova Metzia? He says, because the Posuk in Bova Metzia is a tefillah. Because it's written B'Shem Rabbi Yehudo HaChosid. Shem Hayu Gimel Dorot Rabbi Yehudo HaChosid was 13th generation, was, was, was 12th century. He was the Rebbe of the Or Zarua and the Rokeach, uh, the Smag. He, he was a, 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 an important foundation of Torah. And he was called Rabbi Yehudo HaChosid because of his piety. And he said, Shem Hayu Gimel Dorot HaChamim Efshar Shedor Revi'i O Chamishi V'od Lo Yiyu HaChamim. Even if you've got three generations of Tamidei Chachomim, it can happen that the next generation are not. But eventually the Torah comes back. 
you get a Baal Tshuva movement, and eventually you find the great-grandchildren, the great-grandchildren are back learning in Yeshiva. And that's the Gemara in, in Bova in Mitzi. The Gemara in Bova Mitzi is, the guarantee is, it will eventually come back. The Rebbe Hashem is not guaranteeing that it will be every successive generation. The Rebbe Hashem is guaranteeing it will eventually come back. But here, when we're talking about these three great people, about Rabbi Yoshaya, Rabbi Chame, and Rabbi Bisa, we're not talking about eventually coming back. We're talking about right now what a brocha that these three people, as the Rashbam says, are talking to one another. That Rabbi Yoshaya, she amar keno, that the grandchild learned the Torah, understood the Torah the way his Zayda did. He goes back to the source that these three generations are in conversation around the meaning of Torah. They're discussing their values. And when father and son has a difference of opinion about values, it's a topic of, edu- of discussion at the, at the dinner table. They're not talking about this, the results of the sports events. They're not talking about politics. They're not even talking about the war. At the dinner table, they're talking about values. They're talking about Torah. And father and son disagree. They go back to the Zayda. And they ask the Zayda how to learn it. That's the three-generational conversation that takes place. And that's this brocha of, of Chuta Meshulash Lobi Merai Yenateh, that the, a three-stranded string doesn't break easily. And so what can we do? Yes, it's, th- there's a randomness. We can do what we try to do to raise our children well, but there's no guarantee. What do we need to do? We need tefillah. A father needs and a grandfather needs to daven for his children and grandchildren because that fellow is an, enormous, an enormously powerful influence on the success of those children and, and grandchildren. And one needs to make sure that there's multi-generational conversation, that the grandfather, the father and the son are all talking about their values. It's not something that is kept isolated and that is encapsulated in each generation, but that across the generations, the conversations are happening and that there's an ability and a, and a desire to go back to the source and out of the three generations to find out what is the yesoid, what is the foundation on which our values rest? What is the foundation on which our emunah rests? What is the foundation on which our understanding of the Torah rests? Go and ask your father. And if you and your father disagree, Zekeinecha, go to the Zaydas, the Yom Rulach, and they will resolve your disagreement, and they will bring you back to the origin and to the source and make sure that there's true continuity of Jewish values, of Jewish beliefs, of families, of Tamidich Chachomim, of people who are dedicated to the living of Torah and the understanding of Torah.